Thank you, Angela, for the, the good lead-in. Uh, so I'm Michael Goff. I'm the director of Agile Strategies at Small Footprint. Uh, I'm very passionate about Agile, but I'm also very passionate about planning. So I'm hoping today we can give you guys a feel that uh, in the Agile world, we really should have and need to have both. Uh, so today I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, a new concept for a framework and some ideas of how we can do better planning. And Liz is going to give an actual case study where we've tried to use this in the real world. <coughs> All right, so uh, before we get started, I'm assuming that most of you have come in here at your own free will. So I'm very curious if you could share, a few people could share with me why and what some of the expectations you have are today uh, before we get started. So what happened to planning? Um, so uh, we've been doing Scrum and Agile for many years. Uh, we've gotten very good at developing an Agile, about collaborating, um, getting in and building uh, Scrum teams quickly. We found ourselves very good at coaching people on how to do basic Scrum. Uh, but one thing we had uh, was that our value that we could deliver to a customer was limited by the value of the backlog that they were able to give us. So we decided, well, okay, you know, we want to deliver more value to our customers. Let's figure out how we can be build better backlogs. And as we researched and looked into what practices were for building the backlogs, we found that the, the practices were either broken and disconnected or they were non-existent. Uh, and so we started trying to think about how can we impact this better. We want to build value. We talk about building value and we call things, um, you know, agile, we readjust to deliver value, reorganize our, our development teams to deliver based on product, but we don't focus on actually getting the best and highest valued products uh, or uh, ideas in our product backlog consistently. So the first thing we need is that Agile engine. So we practice Scrum, and when we scale, we do a, form, a kind of a mixed form of less and Nexus. Um, but either way, at the base level is Scrum. Okay, we've got our, we create our sprint backlog and sprint planning, and we do our reviews and retrospectives and daily stand-ups. So this center circle is a cycle. It's very fast moving. Teams are very effective and efficient. Um, and there could be one team to a product, lots of teams to a product. But the key is, so, so when, I, when I draw this, we are thinking product focused. Um, so we're not talking your entire 2,000 person IT organization. We're talking about a group of people focused on a particular product or, or project. So the one thing we want to add to this, and, and if anybody's ever read about less uh, large scale scrum, they recommend the same, which is add the backlog refinement. So this is the opportunity to give you, and this is per team. So if you have an eight team scaled organization, this is per team backlog refinement to get, give that team an opportunity to see what's coming down the pike, possibly refine and split those stories with you, give a technical view. Maybe they've got good input and good ideas, but give them that vision of what's coming down the pike. And this is the simplest thing we can do to give some more of that planning. So the backlog refinement, a few tips. Number one, tips. Number one, make it a ceremony per team. Again, this is the team's opportunity to look ahead. If you try to do a refinement with eight different teams and try to have everybody in a room, we're not going to accomplish a lot for what those teams really need to see. And include the whole team, too. This is not just for one or two developers, or we're not going to include QA. We want to get everybody in there. And feel free, if it's, if it's relevant, invite some stakeholders. If, if they're relevant to the conversation, maybe you need your UX team, whoever, invite them, have a good conversation. And use this opportunity to do some of the things as a product owner that you would do normally do outside of these ceremonies, like splitting stories, adjusting priorities, uh, and, and refining things. Do this with the team. Let the team have an opportunity to, to impact how you split a story. Don't just assume that, hey, I've got it split it down to three points per story. Let the team tell you what the best way to split it is, especially if the value that you're trying to deliver is in that one big story. Let the team help you split that, that up into small chunks. And use this opportunity as well to look back at the vision at any time. If the team starts pushing back on you, like, why are we doing this? Step back and look at the vision. What were we trying to achieve on this in the first place? What was the big picture? Because when we get into those small chunks, we can lose that, the picture of the big vision. So in summary, <clears throat> It is not only okay, but I encourage you to build multi-iteration plans and let this help you. But also, don't just sit, build the plan, and then waterfall it through the next six sprints. Constantly work to iterate on it. Are we still doing the right thing? Do we need to change that plan? And also, make it visible. Communicate that with management. Communicate it with the team. Uh, and make it constantly visible.